Tales from the Top Flight. <laughs> Here he is. Here he is. It's that time of the week again. Hello, Chris. How are we? Very well. How are you guys? I'm very, very well, thank you. I mean, I can't speak for you guys. How are you? Delightful. Dreadful. Dreadful. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about Swansea later, OK? We'll talk about Swansea later, I promise. Uh, Chris, you're normally quite smug calling from Spain, but is it getting a bit nippy there? You're in a hoodie, mate. I'm, I'm wearing two hoodies, Tobes. Two, no. two hoodies. Why? What, what's the temperature out there? Uh, let's say six degrees. I don't Ooh. actually know, but it's, uh, it's not that bad, really, is it? You can go inside. We never told you to Skype from the balcony every time you do this. It, it's, it's lovely out here. Lovely out here. Where's the, uh, where's the jumper from, by the way? Because one of our producers, Matt, is wearing your um, Star Trek jumper from last week, and we decided that he's going to copy you a week ahead from now on. You've just got to go to Primark in Spain. Uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> I've, I've, I've given up most things in life, but, but not Primarni. What, what's Primark in Spanish? Uh, Primark. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking for that. Uh, looking ahead to another weekend of Premier League action, Chris. Um, the huge game. Chelsea versus Spurs this weekend. Massive game, isn't it? Yeah, well, Andre Villas-Boas has been back in the news for Chelsea in the last couple of days. Um, apparently, he's uh, now out in China, not for the money, because of the high quality of league mm. that, they, that they deliver out there. But he's, uh, he's uh, having almost retired John Terry once, asking him to defend on the halfway line. He's now looking to take the older version out to China with him, providing he takes John Obi Mikel as well. So <laughs> that could be a great little retirement fund for, for JT. It doesn't look like he's going to be getting a game in Conte's back line any time soon. But uh, Spurs were trying to continue to deliver on their uh, theory of going 2-1 down and coming back to win in thrilling circumstances but they kind of screwed it up against Monaco a little bit, really. Monaco didn't follow my advice of Tuesday night of don't let people called Harry get the ball or give away penalties because they conceded a penalty and, and Harry scored it. But, uh, but yeah, it's quite amusing for, uh, for, for Spurs. Maybe they're going to have to play the Europa League games at Wembley, which is another brilliantly thought-out plan. Just when you think the Spurs could have got themselves sorted out, no, there's the gift that keep on giving year after year. That is a very good point. I don't know what the plan is. Is, it, is that the plan, Chris? Do you know your Open League games at Wembley? I, I genuinely don't know, but please, please let it be that they've got to play the Europa League game. I love that. It. Tottenham versus like, <laughs> <laughs> Sarisbor at Wembley. <laughs> <laughs> it could be good. Um, another huge game, the mighty Liverpool, the unstoppable force, even though they drew nil nil last week. Uh, Liverpool at home against Sunderland. It should be a win, which is why the Liverpool fan to me is saying we're definitely dropping points. Yeah, well, I think Liverpool fans the world over very subtly sort of breathed a huge sigh of relief on the news of Gerrard's retirement, as that means that they're now odds on to win the title because there won't be any romantic gestures of bringing him back into the team Boo. just for that final swan song towards the end, <laughs> yeah, end of the season. Boo, so, yeah, I Liverpool... wanted him. I wanted him play a coach. He could just sit there in the coaching team, then 38th game of the season, if we're going to win the league, bring him on for 20 seconds. That was my plan, but sadly not, sadly not. Uh, sadly, <laughs> sadly not. I mean, a lot, of the, uh, a lot of his former colleagues have come out in support of him over the last few days, saying that he's the greatest player that they've ever played with, the best of the generation. I mean, don't get me wrong, Stevie G was a good player, but best of the generation? He wasn't even the best midfielder in that team. Are you saying you're going to say Chabby Alonso, aren't you? Don't I'm going to say Chabby Alonso. Don't bring Chabby into this. <laughs> don't you dare bring Chabby into this. Um, I've got so much I'm going to say about you. I'm going to save it for the Manchester United fan at the end of the show, and I'm going to tell him how good Steven Gerrard was. I'm just going to tell you how good Stevie G was, if that's all right. Um, United as well, on the topic of Manchester United. West Ham tomorrow. Um, two yeah. teams that could do well, a win. Uh, jo Jose's been so wowed by Zlatan's sort of performances this season that he's giving him another year contract. Probably got nothing to do with Zlatan's interview where he was saying he was off to America very, very soon. But, I mean, bearing in mind Zlatan didn't actually get paid for that interview, turned out he got another sort of 250 grand a week for another year off the back of it. So, well played, Zlatan. <laughs> it's probably your best performance this season so far. Um, Pogba and Lingard have uh, devised a new secret handshake, which uh, is yet again great use of their their time at training. I mean, <laughs> you, could, you could think that they might work on basics like sticking the ball in the back of the net. And uh, Rooney seemed a little bit confused uh, last night, having been given man of the match for the first time in a, in a very long time. Having come out and apologised for being at the wedding, there being photographic evidence of him being at the wedding, 
he's now completely denying any any sort of uh, reasoning that he was actually at the wedding. Well, until so... I see some evidence, Chris. <laughs> 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 so, but it's not, nice to see Wayne Rooney uh, become United's leading goal scorer in Europe. I mean, he gets a lot of stick, but he is English. He has done a few things quite well in his career, so... And it wasn't a bad goal. Why does, the, why does he get an easy ride? Why, why, <laughs> why is Steven Gerrard getting all the criticism? Why is Wayne Rooney getting a hard time? I, Unbelievable. I stick, I stick names in a hat at the start of the week, Toby, and whoever comes out is the one that I pick on. <laughs> the Chris Darwin, Tom Steve. Bowler. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, while we've got you here and while we've got the fans on the Lime Green sofa, I've got to ask you about the big one. Is it the first six-pointer of the season, Swansea versus Crystal Palace? It's the, it's the six-pointer of the weekend, whether it is the one of the season. I think Sunderland Hull might have, uh, mm. might have claimed, uh, claimed that one last week. But it's been an interesting week at, at, week at Palace. Wilfred Zaha has uh, mentioned that he's very keen to switch his allegiance over to the Ivory Coast now, away from England, just in case Pardew does get the England job one day. I think <laughs> 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 with him this season that there's no way he's going he's gonna to take that risk. Pardew's actually said in the media today that Palace's problem is scoring goals. Brilliant, Alan. Well, <laughs> well also, conceding them at set pieces seems to be a reoccurring theme as well, Alan. Yeah. And teams that struggle to score goals and concede quite a few typically end up in and around where, where you are now. But never fear, Palace fans. He's also said that he's an experienced enough manager to, to get them out of the trouble. But basically, his experience was enough to get them into the trouble. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know what those guys feel here, but I think Pardew, uh, Pardew might not be at Palace come the transfer window. Uh, put, it this, put it simply, if Palace lose tomorrow, does Alan Pardew get sacked? Um, I don't think so. You I'm not saying so. whether it's right or wrong, but I don't think he will. I okay. think if he was going to go, he'd have gone in the international break. Really? Au contraire. <laughs> if, we lose, if we lose tomorrow... Uh, there'll be another person down the job exchange on Monday morning and it'll be Alan Pardew. Really? Absolutely. Think so? You think so? There you go. Do you, do you have any... Do you care about Alan Pardew's <laughs> emotions at all? Or do you just... Not right now, no. No? No? <laughs> no. Fair enough. But he, he won't be down the job centre, that's all I can say. Oh, you don't think, you don't think you're going to beat them? Ever the optimist, no. <laughs> <laughs> Ever the optimist, no. Uh, Chris, mate, it's always a pleasure to hear from you. Go back to uh, Nippy Spain. Where are you again? I forget every week where you are. I'm, I'm on the Costa Blanca tonight, mate. Yeah, very nice. Very, very mm. nice. Send it, my love, mate. Send it, my love. Will do. How's football manager going? Um, very, very, very well. I mean, I'm on the Costa Blanca in real life, but I'm on the Portuguese coast on the, uh, on the virtual world, so it's not a bad life. Well, it's not a bad life, is it? It's not a bad life. Chris, mate, always good to hear from you. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Cheers, mate. Have a good week. That was Tales from the Top Flight with Chris Darwin. Thank you very much, Chris. We'll be back the same time next week. Tales from the Top Flight.